Hi, welcome to my channel. My name is Ben and I'm an actuarial student with the Institute and Faculty of Actuaries. In this video, I'm going to be explaining how I structure my studies when I'm taking an actuarial exam. So for almost every actuarial subject, the subject content is split into chapters. The chapters are then bunched into parts and at the end of each part or two parts or so, there's an assignment. And these assignments have set deadlines that are published by the Institute and Faculty of Actuaries. If you haven't bought new notes and you've used the CMP upgrade method, then the assignment deadlines are also available online. So you also need to download those. I'll leave a link to them in the description box so that you can access them as well. And the way I do my planning is that I put all these assignment deadlines into a spreadsheet and I also put in the final exam date and the mock exam date. I then plan all my study activities around those deadline dates to make sure that I'm studying at a comfortable pace or at a pace that the institute thinks I'm going to pass. I'm going to take you through my tracker now, but then I'm also going to leave a link to it in the description box so that you don't have to do the formulas and set up the spreadsheet in the way that I did. You can just use mine and change a few things here and there so that you don't waste too much time setting up your study tracker. Okay, so I'm only going to demonstrate my two subject tracker. And this is the one I'm using for CP1. The blue cells are where I record all the input information. So up here in cells uh, C2 and D2, I've got the two papers, the paper one and paper two, and the dates that they're going to be written, most likely at 9 a.m. Uh, I've used 9 a.m. local time, but it'll be 9 a.m. UK time. It doesn't really matter um, because I'm unlikely to be studying on the day anyway, so it doesn't affect my calculation for the days to the exam. Um, over here, I've got all the recommended deadlines for the assignments, and I've also got the mock exam recommended deadline. Then in this column, we're checking whether we're still okay for that assignment. And as you can see here, they're indicated as past due all the way up to assignment four, but then I'm still okay for assignment five and six. My current plan is to write assignments in the week of the 30th of, actually on the weekend of the 30th of January. So not in the week of. Um, over here, I've got the final deadlines for those assignments. And um, you can see over here that the final deadline for assignment six is way after the weekend of the 30th of January. And even the recommended deadline for assignment six is also after the weekend of the 30th. So I feel that I'm okay for my assignments. I'm also going to do the smock much earlier than the 10th of March just so that um, I leave a lot of time for SP7 revision. Over here, I fill in um, that I've completed an assignment. So if I put in a one, it's going to be marked as done. And then I'll do the same for the rest of the assignments and the mock exam as well. Um, I've also recorded, um, what is this? Oh, um, the percentage of the course that each assignment relates to. Yeah, that's what this section is talking about. And then over here, I've also got the duration of um, each assignment based on the number of marks that are allocated to that assignment. But all this is related to information on the progress sheet. So you don't have to fill in anything over here. Unless you've got a different number of chapters, you might need to just check that the formulas are summing the correct things once you've um, changed your input details. And then we move on to the progress sheet. I've put in the chapters by part of the course, chapter number, the number of pages in that chapter, and the percentage of the course that each chapter represents. Then, um, the cumulative progress if I've completed a chapter. So in this column G, I'm recording that I have read through the course notes, I have made my own notes that represent the syllabus objectives, and I now I have finished studying for that particular chapter. When I move on to iteration one, 
I'll be doing revision so that I am able to write the assignment. So for example, the first assignment covers part one and two. So it means I have to have ones over here before I write that assignment. And then um, once I'm done with the assignment, I have to revise the chapters three other times just to make sure that all the information is really in my mind. And the second iteration is what I'll do before I write the mock exam. And then I'll do two more times before I start doing past papers. And then over here, I've got the practice questions for each chapter and I fill in a one once I've completed the practice questions for that chapter. Um, this is also going to be recorded on the summary page to show the progress I've made with the subject. Um, over here, I've got my past papers log, which is for all the past papers that I plan to attempt. The first one here is um, from 2015. I'm planning to do all the pa past papers from 2015 to 2020. So I've downloaded them off the Institute and Faculty of Actuaries website, and I've recorded that um, in the year 2015 for the April sitting paper one, um, this was the mark allocation. Oh, the stuff is hidden actually. Is it hidden? No, it's not hidden. Okay, so there was one paper one, and then um, have I done it yet? I'll put in a one here, and then I, I put in the date that I've attempted it. And then over here, I calculate the score for that exam. So the score is the sum of the individual marks for each question, for each question, sorry. And then um, over here, I've got the total mark allocations for each question. So you can see that the, there's been a shift in the subject. In the past, they used to give very few questions with a lot of high marks for the last question. But then in the more recent years, they've started spreading the marks out a little bit more. So I have filled in the mark allocations for all the questions from 2015 up to 2020. So with this subject, there's also been some strange things. So for example, in 2018, there were two paper twos in the first um, session. So I just called it 1.5. It doesn't really matter. Um, there were also two paper twos in the September session. Is that what that means? Session two, paper 1.5. Session two, paper 2.5. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, two paper ones and two paper twos. So I've just put them in. I'll attempt them both. If they happen to be the same thing uploaded erroneously, I'll just um, mark it as done, which doesn't really affect anything. And then where you see a zero for the session, it's actually the specimen paper. So when they changed the syllabus in 2019, they released a specimen paper. So that's also available on the Institute and Faculty of Actuaries website. I've also added the assignments X1 to X6. And with those assignments, I have given a breakdown of the mark allocations for the assignments. And they're added up over here so that we know how many marks are in each assignment. So once I've attempted a question, I'll put in my score for that question. Let's say over here it's out of 10, I get maybe an eight. It's already calculating the percentage over here so that we know the past papers that were passing and the ones that we're doing not so good in. And then we're able to measure progress on our past paper attempts. Um, this time allocations sheet is not really important right now. I will go through it in a separate video about uh, managing your time for exam attempts. So the last sheet that we need to go over is the summary sheet. So over here, we bring in everything that you've done to indicate your progress for the subject. So, so far it's saying that I'm 4% done with the subject. And if we're to take a closer look, the first thing that's being added are the past papers that I said I would do. I'm doing a total number of 28 papers. I've completed none. I don't have to fill in anything on this sheet, by the way. I've completed none. And um, I've also indicated the time allocation for paper, which is three and a quarter. 
hours. Um, we've also got the total number of hours based on this individual time allocation and the number of um, papers that I'm going to write. We've also got the notes revision section over here, which is the one that I'm currently working on. So the first read, which is where I'm taking my notes, I'm 69% done with that. And then um, I haven't done the first revision, obviously, because of what I've explained to you. So I'm 14% done with my notes so far. And then chapter practice questions, I've done chapter one practice questions, and that is only 3% of the practice questions in the course. So that's being recorded, and it's also part of the summary up here. And then we'll move on to the assignments. I, this is a mistake, that's not supposed to be there. Um, there are a total of six assignments, and the total number of hours is 16.2, and these are from the assignment deadlines sheet. And then um, I, my progress is zero because I haven't attempted anything. And then this is just a final tracker for me that indicates how I'm faring with the notes. So I've noticed that on average, I do about 10 pages per 50 minute session. So um, over here, I work out the number of pages left out of like all the number of pages that we detailed in the progress sheet. And then based on the number of pages and my speed, it's estimating that I've got 39 sessions left, which is quite reasonable. I should be done with the course soon. So this will help you to measure realistically when you're going to be able to finish taking your notes for the particular subject. And then up here, as I said before, that's the overall progress for the subject, and it's only 4%. Okay, so I really hope that you enjoyed my tracker and that you will find it useful in your studies as well. If you're studying CP1, good for you. Everything is already filled in. And I've also done one for SP7 because I'm also attempting that. So if you're studying that as well, that's great for you. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel for more content like this, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.